Watch you guys today we're taking a look at why you should get a NAS. Now this one is a pretty affordable NAS and I've bought some drives here as well to go with it. We'll take a look at those in a second. This is the Terramaster F4423. It's the new release from Terramaster and they're a very affordable NAS solution if you're looking for a network attached storage. This is everything you get inside the kit. You're going to get your warranty, user manual, some stickers, and uh, your quick start guide as well. Simple stuff to set up. I'll show you how to do it. You've got some screws here in case you want to screw down some two and a half inch drives in here. You've got some rubber pads here for the drives and also for the bottom in case you lose them. This stops the vibration. You've got your Ethernet cable here and you've got your power adapter. This one is for the UK, but you'll get one for your country depending where you buy it from. So there is loads of things you can do with a NAS. It's not just for backup. You can access your NAS from anywhere in the world, outside of your network or inside your network, from multiple computers in your home as well, if you wanted to. It's your own private little cloud. We've got four bays here, which we can populate with drives. And you can use three and a half inch drives or two and a half inch drives. You've got your LED lights on the side to indicate your activity and your power button on here as well. So you can basically just remove these by pulling on the bottom here and then you can slide these out. Now we're going to be populating this with just two drives, which gives us room to add more drives later on. So I'm going to be adding four terabyte drives. It's a toolless design, which means you can just pop this off and plug in your drive and clip it into position. This is a new feature for Terramaster, which I really do uh, like because you used to have to screw them in. But we've got two and a half inch and three and a half inch in here. And again, you don't have to use four terabyte drives. You can use smaller drives or larger drives, depending on what your budget is. We'll add the drives a little bit later on. Let's take a look around the back of the unit here. So on the side, you can see it's just got their logo and we have two fans. These are smart fans, which means you can uh, change the speed of these fans to either high speed, medium speed or low speed. And uh, again, they're pretty quiet. You don't really hear them. So you've got the HDMI on here as well for uh, external uh, video source. We also have uh, two USB drives here. They're the type A USB drives, which is 3.2 uh, Gen 2. 10 gigabits per second uh, speeds on these uh, drive ports here, which means you can add in more uh, storage on here as well. We've got RJ45s, we've got two uh, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports on here, which is going to give you those super fast transfer speeds if you have uh, the network speed enabled in your home. So a pretty decent uh, little device here. We've got plenty of ventilation on the bottom, you can see here got the anti-vibration and anti-slip rubber feet on here as well. It's got two M.2 slots on here, which means you can have two NVMe drives on here as well. It does have an Intel Celeron N5105 processor in here. There's a quad core processor with a 2.0 uh, gigahertz and a maximum turbo boost of up to 2.9 gigahertz and an integrated GPU on here. System memory is four gigabytes. It does come pre-installed with one uh, memory module on here as well, but a total of two can be installed. I'll leave the link in the video description for all of the specifications so you can take your time to read it over. I'm not going to go through everything in this video because we'll be here for an hour, but we've got two drives here which I want to populate. These are Seagate Iron Wolf drives. Uh, these are the best drives for your NAS drive, so I am just going to get these out of the packaging. I got these from Box, uh, pretty reasonable price, around about 80 odd pounds for these drives each. So I'm only buying two of these right now. I'm just gonna populate these. So let's just pull the uh, toolless design off here and we just need to slot in the actual drive here and then we can push these little holders inside here to hold the drive into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in. So just push it all the way to the back here like so, and then clip it into position. And then all we need to do is put the uh, tallest design bit back in. That just needs to come down a little bit more at the front, and that should hold it into position. So another good thing about a NAS drive is sharing media with your friends and family. You can quickly share media to your friends and family anywhere in the world, and you can access your data remotely. These are really important features in my personal opinion. You can increase your personal storage as well, around your home, which means all of your computers in your home can access 
your NAS drive, which will give them access to more storage. Data backup and redundancy is also another important thing with NAS drives like these, which means your data will be secure and safe. If one drive fails, uh, you just plug in another drive and all your data will be transferred over to that other drive. So you'll be perfectly fine and your data will be safe. Okay, use the 321 backup plan solution and that way you won't lose any data. Another good thing about it is streaming movies or videos around your home to every device that you have. You can use Plex for this. I'll show you some of the applications we can install. So it's not just a backup device. I'm going to power this on and get this to populate. You'll hear a bunch of beeps, but don't worry about it. Once we get this done, we're going to head over to the computer and type in that address, which comes with the little pamphlet, which will then give us this page here to say quick installation guide. I'm going to put in an email address here and put in the actual uh, details for the model number here. So just fill in all the blanks and then you can hit start. This will give you access to the contents uh, menu. And then you can see here it's given us all the information here. It gives us an instructional guide on how to set this up and how to install it. It's very easy to understand. There's images on here with also English written text, which makes it easy to understand. So just follow the guide and get your setup, or you can watch the video. Once you've done, you can click automatic installation. I'm going to be doing the custom one here, but you should do automatic if you've never used one of these before, and it sets it all up for you using the recommended settings. Now it's detected my two drives. It's just going to quickly check the drives to make sure the drives are okay and compatible with this uh, unit. And uh, once this is done, it will go to install the TOS operating system on the NAS. So we've got access to it uh, via our browser. So let's go ahead and let this go ahead and install. It's downloading it from their website and installing it. You can do this manually by downloading it and sideloading it on that way, but this is more the easier way. So now you can create a storage pool and you can choose what you like, whatever RAID type you like, depending on how many drives you've got into your machine here will determine which ones you can do. Don't do the one that says without data protection because otherwise you're just using this as like as an external drive and you don't really want to do that. You want some sort of RAID so to protect your data. So choose which one suits you and then push next. Now you can put a description in here if you want. We've got RAID 1. And again, you can see the information on the screen here. I'm just going to click next and move on to the next stage. Now, of course, I'm doing a custom install here, but you can do an automatic one and all this will be taken care for you. So I'm going to be using this one up the top here. If you want to use EXT4, then by all means do so. If you don't know what all these are, then stick to the automatic install and you can read all the information as it's uh, printed out on the screen there. Now, if you are using used drives, then be warned that these will be formatted. They will be erased and all the data will be lost on those drives. So be careful if you are using drives thinking it's just going to use a bit of blank space on that drive. It's not. It's going to completely erase all the drive completely. So just bear that in mind if you have data on those drives. Once you're done, you should see something looking like this, which is your desktop control panel, and you can then access all of the features of that NAS. So as you can see here, we have quite a lot of features here. Now I've blurred out the MAC address and the IP address on the right, but you've got some information there. You can see it's synchronizing here on the drive. So it does take a bit of time and then you can uh, create ex accounts and stuff like that as well for other people and share your data. So once you're here, you can then read the uh, getting started here. There's plenty of tutorials on here that explain on how to do things. So don't feel that you need to be a network engineer to work this stuff out. There's loads of tutorials on the actual device here, which help you understand on how to create accounts, how to uh, set virtual machines up, how to set up Plex, all this sort of stuff will be inside here. You just click on the information here and it will tell you about privileges, permissions, and all that sort of good stuff. Let me know whether you want to see more videos about that sort of stuff and I can make videos on them topics for you if you want to. So let's go through some of the applications here. Now, this is something that people don't understand. You, they think it's just a backup device, but you can set this up for loads of different things. And you can use free tools like IOMI Backupper to back up all your data. We can also use 
other tools as well to back update. We've got snapshots. We've got Plex Media Server. It's compatible with UPnP and DLNA protocols. You can stream videos and various media all to any device around your home or outside your home to smartphones, tablets, or any of that sort of stuff. It's also capable of streaming 4K content, which means you're getting a very powerful media server on your NAS. So whether you want to do virtualized uh, applications or whether you want to use it for backup solutions, media server, a mail server, web server, a file sharing server, you can do just about anything you want with this particular device. It's a very powerful device. So if you've got multiple computers around your home and you want to gain access to some storage, then something like this is going to be ideal. Now, another thing to take into account is if you're buying something like a Cronus and you've got free computers and you want to buy their premium package, it's going to cost quite a lot of money, something like $200 a year. Whereas this is already paid for. Once you buy and put your drives in, you're pretty much good to go. And you can do multiple different things with it. You don't just have to designate, uh, say, as a Plex server. You can still back up your phone to it as well as use it as a Plex server. You can do multiple different things with this particular device. And this is why you should get yourself a NAS. It really is a, a game changer. Once you get a NAS, you'll never look back. It keeps your data private and safe in your own home. And it also gives all your devices access to plenty of storage. And you can add more storage to it when you need it. It's your own private little cloud, like I said. But anyway, I'll leave all the links and information in the video description. If you're interested in getting a NAS, I really would advise you to take a look at all the NASs available out there. But this one is a pretty affordable one, which comes in at around about $499. You may find it cheaper in other locations, again, which is £407 in the UK. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know in the comments section what you'd like to see with this NAS. I'll be happy to make those videos for you. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.